Welcome to the Hiking Through Podcast. I'm Erin Egan, and this is the podcast where I get to pull up a seat at the campfire and have a conversation about all things through hiking, the triumphs and challenges, and of course, those rookie moves. And today's guest is Little Skittle, known off trail as Becca Bergstrom. After one overnight camping trip, she tackled the PCT in 2019, launching herself into the through hiking life and following up with the Oregon Coast Trail and Timberline Trail this year and a few miles on the CDT before everything came to a halt. In this episode, we talk about hiking with her ride or die chicks, Darth Jader and PCP, working through loss and grief during the Oregon Challenge, a few bear encounters, and those rookie moves. You can find this episode and all previous episodes on hiking-through.com. You can also find us on Apple Podcast and all the other podcast places. Enjoy my conversation with Little Skittle. Well, welcome to the podcast. <laughs> thank you for having me. <laughs> and thank you so much for uh, being part of my little experiment here. <laughs> yeah, of course. You got to start somewhere. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's what everybody keeps telling me. So I'm, I'm jumping into the deep end for this one. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for being here and sharing your adventures. Um, yeah. I, I'm assuming looking at like your your plan, I'm assuming that you were supposed to be on either the CDT or the AT this year. Yes. Was that? That's okay. And then they just got pushed forward. Yeah. So initially, I was going to do the AT. That was my plan. We had the flights booked. Um, I had given my job notice. Uh, we had other arrangements made for the dog. And then I got let go, well, not let go, I got furloughed of my job because I made a mandate of, of coronavirus um, mm -hmm. restrictions. And so I got furloughed the day before I was supposed to leave for the AP. And at that time, I was thinking, I, I just kept thinking, what better place to be than the trail? And the ATC hadn't come out with their recommendations. So I was kind of just thinking, yeah, let's just, let's just go in the woods for a couple of months and they'll just blow over. I'll go back and it'll be just like before. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not what happened as we know. Yeah. So we had to cancel our flights. Um, we had to cancel our Airbnbs, our rental car, everything. Um, but I just looked at it in the bright side that there was another adventure to be had this year. And I didn't kind of let that define my year. I wasn't going to let setbacks say 2020 was going to be a bad year so. right right so you were gonna hike were you gonna hike the whole thing with your boyfriend oh no he wasn't going with me he likes oh. to go with me to drop me off <laughs> got it <laughs> got it like, out of the car and say i'll see you later <laughs> um so he just was gonna fly over there with me we're gonna have a couple days to hang out and then he'd fly home so. okay okay so you were gonna yes. solo it again and then pick up yeah. family or whatever on the way mm -hmm. got it okay yeah so that didn't happen. It didn't, um, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so I ended up um, kind of just being at home, laid off, uh, furloughed, as you will. Kind of just playing it by ear, really. Um, I had quite a bit in savings as a buffer. Um, plus, I had some unemployment benefits that eventually started coming in. Um, so it wasn't really like life altering for me. As far as like mm -hmm. a lot of people have gone through a lot of really deep valleys because of coronavirus. Um, yeah. So I feel really fortunate and lucky that I haven't been affected that way. So I kind of just rolled with it this year and decided to just go with it and see what kind of adventures I could get into. And I was able to see a lot of my state that I hadn't really, um, I think just put on the back burner for a little while. So I kind of just started checking off things on my, my Washington bucket list. So like, what were those? Oh, let's see. There's a lake in Alpine Lake Wilderness I've wanted to go to forever, um, but it's 16 miles round trip. Yeah. No. No. It's 16 miles each way. Okay. <laughs> um, so I really wanted to go there, but I really wanted to take my dog, and I needed to make sure that he could be conditioned enough to do something that big. He's never done anything that big before. What kind of dog you got? Some back, yeah, to get some background on that. Um, he is a French bulldog. <laughs> he is not your typical French bulldog. He is 
he's pretty robust, I would say. He's very, very robust. He's about 40 pounds and he carries his own backpack, little uh, saddlebags, if you will. Um, but he loves hiking. And I was really surprised about that when I first saw him. Um, he's actually kind of what got me into really get into hiking. So when I found this lake, uh, I found out about it and I thought that would be so awesome to take him there because he loves to swim, he loves to hike, and I'd love to get him kind of conditioned to get up to something that amazing. And it was, it was everything I hoped it'd be. So, so you guys that lake was called, it. yeah, that was Jade Lake. So that's up in, um, just south of Highway 2 um, that you might cross when you get up there on the PCT up by Stevens. I'm, uh, full disclosure, I'm originally from Leavenworth. I thought you were from somewhere up here. <laughs> I yeah. thought so. Yeah, so, yeah, I've been to Stevens a few times. Okay, yeah. Um, what other kind of adventures did you, get, did you get into before you hit the Oregon Trail or Oregon Coast rather late? Yes, um, so a couple other things I did was, um, I went to a lookout, a fire lookout I really wanted to go to. It's called the Racing Fire Lookout. Um, usually you can't really access it or it's not really safe to access it until about, oh, it depends on the year, but you want a bit of the snow to kind of uh, melt out. Yeah. So we had to wait for that. Um, and every year I thought I might do it, but then just different things came up. And then finally this year, I just had to be the year because the world what was else? ending. So yeah. why not? <laughs> And what else are you doing? Yeah, no. yeah exactly. Um, so I did that. And then I also had, um, I got a bug in my ear about the Timberline Trail after doing the PCT and you come across it. Mm -hmm. And then I had talked to Darwin about it a little bit. And he said, yeah, you should definitely do it. Definitely take your dog if you can get him up there and it, or down there, I guess, south of me. But um, yeah. yeah, those were the top three highlights, I think, of making the best of, of the setbacks we had. Yeah. And then you, Oh, oh. No, nope, one, one more. more. <laughs> so I thought it was going to try to make the CBT a go as well. Um, in, I want to say it was like early June. I think it was, there's a couple other PCT hikers. You might know Frick and Frack. I don't know. Okay. Well, they're, they just finished their triple crown. Sweet. Um, this, this year they were supposed to start the CDT. Well, they didn't supposed to, they did start the CDT. They were starting the day before I intended to start as well. When I decided to make it a backup plan and, um, they had a lot of upticks in the, in the coronavirus at that time. So I decided after eight miles of the CDT, it just didn't feel right to be out there. So I decided to call it and I, I went home. Eight miles, huh? Yeah, eight miles. It kind of sucked because oh. I had to walk all those eight miles back. <laughs> <laughs> so that really sucked, but I don't regret it. I, I'm happy I, I made that. Yeah, yeah. Is that why you got on the Oregon Coast Trail so late? Like some of the other things that you were doing and, and adventuring? Yes and no. Um, it wasn't really on my radar to do that until I connected with I forget how we connected. Julie and I connected from vlogging for the trek together. And then we connected with Maggie, I think just from like fangirling each other on Instagram. <laughs> Tends to happen. Yeah. Uh, and so I think we just started talking and we exchanged numbers and we had a group chat going. And then we kept talking about, man, I just wish we could get out there and do like, you know, through hikes are kind of, you know, there's some controversy over them being morally ethical this year and stuff like that. Um, so we were kind of thinking like, well, what if we just got out there for like a self-supported like short session hike of some sort that, that could work with our schedules? Like what kind of work things do you have going on or other commitments? And um, I think we decided on the Oregon Coast Trail because Maggie was coming over, she's in Montana, and she was going to be flying to Portland for, oh, it was a reunion with Jeff's family in Seaside for a cabin or something like that. 
Perfect. So we're like, well, what's, what better idea than you guys just flying to Portland? I'll pick you guys up and then we'll go to Oregon Coast Trail and walk to your reunion. And that'll be it. <laughs> so it's very convenient. It's not a convenient time of the year. Of course, it's not very uh, Warm. typical coastal, <laughs> tropical <laughs> beach walk, but I think we got really lucky. Yeah, I think so. Because it was, I mean, the first 12 hours were a little of a... Um, oh, let's say embrace the suck mentality. It was downpour from the time we got out of the car in Lincoln City until probably like 4 a.m. when we started. So about the first 12-ish hours of the hike, it was just a downpour. So it really tested like our perseverance to say, this is going to be great, guys. It's going to get better. <laughs> Can we give it from here? <laughs> so I preface them coming over with, okay, it's the Pacific Northwest. Just pack your best attitude and we will just have fun. And, and, and some bullies? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Now, to do that one, you guys were using the hiker app, right? Yeah, yeah. So to start out with, um, we weren't sure how we were going to really navigate it as far as we didn't know how mark the trail would be um and also what would be open for um some of the covid some of the trails of or some of the sections of the trail have trail heads that are public for people driving up and stuff mm -hmm. and they had some covid closures for that so wow. we weren't sure how we would be able to know that ahead of time before we got there and we want to make sure whatever we did was going to be you know um uh, uh, we were going to be responsible um, and set good examples and stuff. So we weren't sure how to really do that. And then Julia Rocket got in touch with this guy who um, runs the hiker app. He's over in Ireland. Mm -hmm. And he said, um, you know, if you ladies want to use this app, I'll set you guys up and you guys can have your adventures. And then you guys can just kind of tag me and show me and I'll um, get some exposure. And it worked out. It had like everything we needed. It talked about campsites along the way it talked about accommodations if we needed to get hotels or a bus route or uh one of the spots you had to take a ferry across a little bay I inlet saw that. So the tide wouldn't go across all the way so yeah it was pretty cool it's a really cool little app it's neat it it did everything you needed to do you could use it offline yeah yeah as long um, as you did um ahead of time as long as you once you download the app and you select your trail you just have to download the the I don't know what you want to call it. It's kind of like when you go to gut hooks and you download the topographical topographical stuff. It's kind of mm -hmm. like that. Okay. Um, but it takes up very little storage and um, yeah, it's pretty thorough. And it has like filters so you can kind of filter. Um, show me along 20 miles where the campsites are, where the water sources are, stuff like that. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Yeah. So will you go back at some point and? catch the rest of the of that trail I really want to yeah and I talked about it with the girls too um I have okay so I have a secret that I don't really want to say but Ooh. let's just say that Washington will be home for some time <laughs> so I'm not going anywhere so I told the ladies if you not if you come back but when you come back let's plan to stitch it all together so mm -hmm. we all definitely have plans to, to do that okay yeah, because I, I, it looked like from the video that you've got on YouTube, you mm. know, I mean, there was frost, don't get me wrong, because it was cold, mm -hmm. but it was also, you know, you guys didn't seem to have issues with snow and that kind of stuff because it is, you know, on the ocean side. Mm -hmm. um, so you may have had rain and wet, but not the snow and that kind of thing, which meant that yeah. it looked like it was, uh, other than blowdowns, it looked like it was pretty clear for you. Yeah, yeah, it was really clear. And it was perfect weather after we woke up that first morning. It was <laughs> perfect, like literally bluebird sky. There was like some ocean breezes, but nothing really major. It was, yeah, it was great. We could have better, better weather. Nice. And then we <laughs> cut to your first trail. Uh, oh. Yeah. Rewind. And rewind, exactly. <laughs> rewind to your first trail that you 
got on after only one day of camping backpacking uh-huh only one overnight it was at um peat lake up in the north cascades um i had accumulated various um backpacking gear from scouring backpacking sites um ra outlet things like that mm -hmm. and eventually i had everything i needed and i thought okay well here goes nothing let's go see how it goes and so buddy i took buddy and he had his backpack ready i got him a little backpack from um pet smart nothing special and we packed up and we took off and i survived <laughs> <laughs> um we both did um yeah it was it wasn't eventful nothing really crazy happened um he was a little bit that was his first time in a tent obviously and it was a little bit difficult for him to kind of just calm down in there because I also left the rain play off because I wanted to be able to see the stars. So he was just watching through the mesh for the first couple hours. Um, but other than that, it was very, very uneventful, which is good. It didn't turn me off, you know? <laughs> right. How, yeah. how long before that, because you've been accumulating gear. So how long before that had you had your eye on maybe the PCT? Or was it the you went on that and then said, oh, okay, now I'm looking for something bigger and the PCT arrived? Yeah, um, I would say I first got into hiking uh, roughly Buddy's year of, of being with me. Um, so that's about five years ago. And then I just kind of built up from there just doing day hikes. So I just started accumulating gear, thinking eventually I'll do a backpacking trip. I wasn't ever thinking I would just hop on the PCT until um, I saw the movie, Wild. A lot of people do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that came on my radar, and I saw that. And then I started hiking with some girlfriends, and they were talking about the trail as well, how it would be a dream thing to do. And so I kind of started thinking about it, like, well, yeah, maybe I might want to do it. So I started looking into it. So I would say... I heard about it and really gave it thought uh, probably four years ago. Three, four years ago is about when I heard about it. Three, year, three years ago is when I said it and said, okay, I'm actually really interested in it. I want to see if it's a possibility I can do. Okay. So. And you find yourself at the Southern Turbinus and your boyfriend kicks you out of the car. <laughs> Literally, yeah. <laughs> Literally. It's like you saw my vlog or something. <laughs> yeah. I might have seen something. <laughs> yeah, he very lovingly um, flew down there with me. Um, he rented a car from the airport, drove down there. I sobbed like a baby. I didn't think I would. And then it just kind of washed over me that I was going to do this like life-changing thing, whether I did it for just the desert or whether I did it for a week or whether I did 500 miles, whatever I was gonna do, I knew that going out there was gonna be like I It was mm -hmm. gonna change me in some way, so yeah. How do you feel it changed you? I have become very positive since <laughs> doing it. Okay. <laughs> it's very, very weird um, realization that came to me within the last year I think and I don't know if that's also compounded by the fact that what else do we have right now but to be positive with everything going on um yeah. but I think it stems from coming off the PCT there it's just a, such a simple life you don't need a whole lot of things to make you happy um and that that realization just made me think like what we have is like I'm so fortunate for what I have like there's not a lot to complain about and so I think that really just transcended into my life post PCT where I'm like yeah I have so much stuff like I don't need to really get down about this thing or that thing or whatnot I have so much to be grateful for um, and there's a lot out there that is happening that um, you could be upset about but if you just dwell on it it's not going to make it any better like you just take it day by day step by step and eventually things will turn around and 
that's kind of how it is on the trail. So I just kind of brought that home with me and it's been pretty good. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I like it a lot. I like this me a lot. <laughs> yeah. You like, uh, you like little Skittles? I do. Yeah. I wasn't too keen on it at first, to be honest. Um, I actually was coined rainbow warrior first. <laughs> I could see that too. Yeah. The, um, Warrior Expeditions, a couple of those guys had had named me that first. And I said, I do appreciate it. It seems very honorary that I'd be like tied into the Warrior Expeditions, but I'm also not a veteran. So I just kind of thought, it, can you come up with something a little bit that would separate me from that and keep let you guys keep your distinguishing name? So I got the moniker a little skittle. <laughs> you definitely had the colorful outfit out there. Yes. Yeah, that's that's also what I took home because before I came in the PC, I had a job where I wore nothing but black. Literally, um, everything I had clothing wise was black, and so I really got to go out there and just kind of have fun with the colors and play around and just be bright, <laughs> be seen. So I just feel like it's kind of welcoming too, mm -hmm. you know. It's interesting that you make the comment about being seen. Can I take that as literal as you're saying it, or is it more maybe figurative or metaphorical? Um, I think uh, both, because I feel like, well, that's all that I feel like it. Um, I used to be, I still am really introverted and shy, mm -hmm. but I do love having connections and having um, conversations and meeting people and being influenced by them or, you know, um, gaining new perspectives by them, stuff like that. So being able to be seen and heard and respected and understood is, has become pretty important to me, not only as like an individual, like how I just felt introverted my whole life, but also I think just as a female, um, to yeah. be seen in the outdoors as well. And, that whole fear of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yes. And and you hike most of the trail with your, I believe you called them your rider dies, but uh, <laughs> with with Jade and, and PCP. Yes. Yeah. Those and ladies rock. <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree. One hundred percent. And it, it was kind of a crazy, like following your journey. I guess I hadn't realized, strangely enough, when I talked to each of them, that you were also part of that group, um, mm -hmm. strangely. But it was really interesting, like following your journey, journey in conjunction with their journeys, because you guys were very much together and then you kind of had to go your own ways and then you came back together again. How did that work? I'm assuming it wasn't, planned or maybe it was a little planned but so it was we all started separately um pcp i don't think had heard of us and we had not heard of pcp but jade and i had connected prior to the pct on on instagram ah okay um i was helping out a friend who does um a page that uh hypes up other girls kind of like what we do now and I asked her to be a part of it. And that's how I met Jade um, virtually. And then I caught up to her um, at the 200 mile mark. Um, yeah, because we got a picture taken there at the 200 mile mark. Um, and that's when we actually met in person. She was hiking with her brother and a couple other people. I'm not yeah. sure. Um, and then we connected with PCP in. Idlewild, yeah, about 350 miles, we connected with PCP. Are you tapping on anything? Oh, my dog is. Yes, oh, hold on. Okay. I, I kept hearing this tap, tap, tap. I was like, sorry. <laughs> He's been reprimanded. <laughs> no worries. I just had to have an explanation somewhere. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we connected with PCP in Idlewild. Um, so shortly after Jade and I finally hooked up, PCP came in the end of the picture pretty soon too. So we kind of were on the same footing kind of all at once. 
Um, and then as far as us getting disconnected throughout the miles, um, it was planned for PCP to connect back with us when she got off trail. She went back to Colorado to go to a concert, I believe it was, with her sister um, right before the Sierra. And she was really, she was kind of like, I thought she was like on the fence of maybe not even going because she was afraid of coming back and not having us be there to go through this snow, yeah. which is totally understandable. Um, but she ended up going and then she said she would just work her butt off to get to us. If we believed her because she's just a badass, you know? So it was planned for her to connect with us. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. Um, and so Jade and I pushed on to Sierra and then we kind of just heard through the grapevine that she was also eventually doing the same, mm -hmm. just a little bit further behind. And so we kept just kind of plodding along, hoping our, our trails would connect again, basically. And they did, uh, where was it? Uh, White Pat is where we oh, all wow. connected again. Yeah, so sometime later, um, Jade and I went on together for a while after the Sierra, and then she got off at Shasta to climb Shasta. And so then I did everything alone <laughs> until- How was that? Oh, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't bad to be honest, because the first, um, until I linked up with Jane in the beginning, some 200 miles, I was alone. And so I kind of just thought, Jade wasn't taking that much time off. And so I just thought, oh, she'll catch me. Like, it won't be that long. It won't, I'm not going to be alone that long. Plus, I, when I'm home, I, I hike alone anyways. So I wasn't that worried about it. Um, so it wasn't too bad. And I kind of prefer that it did happen because that way it gave me the chance that we'd be alone out there. Um, I kind of just go by my own schedule, my own beat and my own drum and stuff. And it was... Uh, yeah, it was also really nice. Um, it depends on what you prefer, but because of what I went through with losing my grandma on the trail, it was really nice to be alone during that. A lot of people process it differently, but uh, yeah, I just it was it was nice to be by myself. I think during that time, it let you grieve however you wanted without the pressure of somebody asking you how you're yeah. feeling every day exactly yes like are you okay or do you want to talk about it or yeah yeah and it just stopped whenever I felt like I wanted to stop if I felt her presence at a certain peak or if I just felt like doing five miles or something like that you know right so, yeah now it's one thing to hike on your own it's another thing to camp on your own mm-hmm were you also camping on your own or were there were you connecting up with people along the way to, for camping purposes at least no no i was strictly just going on my own path oh well, on the trail but right by my own schedule um and i ended up uh, after i would say after hmm Right after the, right after you pass into Oregon, I feel like it really thinned out with people I saw along the trail. Cause a lot of the people that had flipped up, I, we were already passing each other. They were still mm -hmm. coming south and I was still heading north. So by the time I got into Oregon, I wasn't really seeing a lot of people to even try to camp with if I had wanted to. Um, and so it really was just, I may as well just go off on my own and not worry about having to meet up with somebody or uh, yeah. make a certain camp by a certain mile. And for everybody's reference who's listening, it, you, you hiked this in the season of 2019, which was a heavy, heavy, heavy snow year. And so people were all over the place on the trail trying to either go through it or avoid it or go around it or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot of um, fear mongering is what they say, the term they use. A lot of yeah. fear mongering about what the conditions were like for people who weren't even there to experience it. And so I feel like that, um, I definitely feel like that probably changed a lot of people's experiences because they felt like they were 
um, inadequate or inexperienced or didn't have the right gear or weren't with the right people or, you know, all those things. So, uh, yeah. I've, I've heard probably. people say if they skipped up above the Sierras and then came back down again, that it wasn't a true mm -hmm. through hike or, you know, yeah. it's very sad to hear them devaluing the fact that they hike, they still hike 2,650 miles. Mm -hmm. Actually, plus because they would have to have gone from Hart or from Hart's Pass or Rainey's Pass up and then back down again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I had a lot of people that um, one girl, uh, Marie, drives a PQT. She mm -hmm. got a lot of flack about her journey not being a third hike. A lot of criticism, um, and I felt like she dealt with that really well. She kind of set the record straight. Um, when it would be addressed on social media that it's your hike, it's called hike yeah. your own hike for a reason. Um, and however you choose to do it, it doesn't affect anybody else. Like it's not, it's your experience. It's what you make of it, so. Yeah. It's so funny cause that you bring up hike your own hike. I mean, it's obviously a saying, it's a cliche and everybody says it, and then a lot of times proceeds to ignore it and just do the thing. Mm -hmm. um, it it feels like it's a it's a struggle to stay true to the reality or the the essence of what hike your own hike is supposed to mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did did you find any of that pressure, or did you have any of that pressure, or were you just because of circumstance able to circumstance? I should say either because of circumstance and or fortitude of will able to truly hike your own hike? I think that I wasn't really, um, I didn't really take it to heart when people say it. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I'm not affected by it, I guess. Like my, the way that I pushed through, it wasn't because I felt pressure to do so because it wouldn't be considered a through hike if I didn't go all the way or slipped or whatever. Um, my, my, like, what would you call it? My direction through the trail was just, I think, uh, stubbornness. <laughs> like, I just said, like, you know, what? I said I was going to do this and what am I going to just go home and sit on my couch because it, this is hard or I'm cold or I'm tired or I'm dirty or like, no, it's beautiful out here. And, you know, whether I finish it or not, like, like I have to at least try. Mm -hmm. If I don't do it as fast as I want, if I don't do it um, by a certain date, who cares? But I said I was going to do it. And that's, I think, what pushed me through is because I said, I'm going to go hike it and I'm going to get to Canada. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I know this is a really silly question to ask, but did That's you have okay. doubts? <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm sure you had moments where you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. Or if I have one more day of X, I'm, I'm going to leave or, or I'm going to quit. Yeah. Um, I didn't have, um, I never said, it wasn't ever like, I want to quit or I don't want to do this or I don't want to be out here. The only thing that comes to mind, well, two things, I guess. The first being um, in the Sierra, we were leaving to go back in after our first um, stretch of the snow. And we were coming up on leaving and a storm, um, storm system was rolling in. And we were supposed to go up and over Kearsarge Pass and then go on to Glen Pass in the first push which was going to be very tiring and quite dangerous, to be honest. Yeah. And um, we had a setback where we decided to just call it and go back into town and reassess, which was a smart thing to do. Um, and at that point, when we got back into town, I, I just didn't know what to do um, as far as if we should try again or if we should flip. But it wasn't ever, I'm going to quit at that point. It was just, what do I do at this point? Do I go up here and come back or do I just keep going? Um, 
So there's no doubt on that situation. The other situation that comes to mind is just taking a break when my grandma passed. Uh, I had thoughts of going off trail just to go home. Um, my main concern is uh, my mom has bipolar and she is, um, she's dependent on me when it happens. A lot of the family is actually to help deal with it. Um, I have a background in psychology and she's just someone that, I'm someone that um, she responds to even in the lowest rows of her episodes. For some reason, she'll still respond to me. Um, and so I knew that when my grandma passed, I just had a feeling like this is gonna set her off. And I thought that maybe I should go home to kind of be there. Um, but I, she kind of, um, sorry. <laughs> no, you're okay. She, um, she did have an episode and it was, it was really bad. Um, I didn't get to talk to her for um, all of the organ. I did the organ challenge so I could get home faster. So I was having to doubt about, do I get off, do I not? So I didn't get to talk to her at all the entire time. Um, but right before, right after I found out that she passed, and then right before I decided, okay, I need to do the organ challenge to kind of get home, um, I got to talk to her one last time um, before she had to get hospitalized. And uh, she just said that it was my grandma's dying wish um, that I not get off trail. I have to do it for myself. I am my mom's an adult. She's a big girl. Um, and that my family has the resources available to get her the medical professional help she needs. So that was really hard to fight because internally I want to go home. Um, yeah. But I don't regret it. Um, it was a perfect place to be to grieve. Um, and my mom was able to get the help she needed. So it, it came out to be a great, great uh, situation. Nothing was, yeah, nothing, nothing went worse just because I, I was. Did you resent the trail though? Or no. Okay. Uh, yeah. And my, one of the things was I kept thinking, I'll probably resent like leaving. I'll regret that. Mm -hmm. Um, especially with what my mom has said, I was like, if I go home, like I, I will probably regret having left because hiking is my reprieve from everything being out there. Um, and what more can I do than just go home and sit there and, and do what? <laughs> so I would probably have just done the same thing my family did eventually and get her hospitalized. Um, and then I would just sit there and wait until we heard from the doctors that, you know, she was responding to medication and stuff. So I definitely don't regret it. I think it was exactly what I needed to say on her. And the trail took care of you? Yes, the trail provided, <laughs> as they say. <laughs> Yes, as cliche as that sounds. <laughs> I mean, they're all cliches at this point, and yet there's a there's truth in every one of them. Well, there is, yes. <laughs> when when you were out there, you guys, whether it was the larger family that you were hiking with, or whether it was when you were with the girls, the ladies, you guys seem to have a lot of questions. Um, it, like from other hikers or no like the questions I think that a lot of them were were jokes or joking or or ways to say are we there yet are we there yet you know oh, like yeah. here is it snack time yet are we almost yeah. <laughs> um uh, and the, the grand one of them all would you rather yes <laughs> yeah would you rather was a really good one um yeah we were always just we just find ways to pass the time. Um, so would you rather is a really great, um, it really gets your imagination and your creative juices flowing um, and see like what you would, what you would do when you're put up against the wall, like what A or B, A or B, red wire, blue wire. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, a lot of the questions as far as like, you know, waking up in the morning and uh, hear, you'd hear the little rustling of someone else's sleeping 
sleeping pad and then you hear it deflate and you're like ah <laughs> is it time yet like can we just one more hour <laughs> can we just one more hour uh, yeah it was lots of questions <laughs> it feels like you guys when you guys were hiking together you were hiking a lot together meaning so you could kind of banter back and forth you know uh -huh. hey would you rather like what was your what was one of your favorite would you rather questions i think probably Well, to, uh, to tie into the whole theme of that year being a high snow year, uh, probably deciding between a typical day is at least about 20 miles for us, mm -hmm. at least 20 miles. So I'd say uh, there was one where it was, would you rather do 25, 20 to 25 miles of lava rock or 20 to 25 miles of sun cups? Um, I said sun cups unfortunately, even though the snow was horrible and I thought I would never, ever, ever, ever want to hike in the snow again after that, um, I said sun cups because um, if you follow the sun cups, it's not that bad. I mean, yes, it burns a little bit, but I'm, I don't really want to get my legs and face and arms tore up by falling on lava rock. That just doesn't sound very good. Um, and plus, I just felt like it's harder on the feet. It, feet really hurt on lava rock a lot. And, and now you have the experience to say that with, with a, uh, to affirm that, I guess. Yes, I do. <laughs> Lots but, of experience. <laughs> but the, the way you frame the question would lead me to believe that you also were falling a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, just because, I mean, you're looking around the entire time at all the beautiful vistas around you. And so you're walking through lava rock and there's, Many times I almost fell, and I probably did fall, to be honest, um, but because it's uneven and you don't really see it because it kind of just blends in with itself. And so you're just walking around, lo not looking, and then before you know it, you're on your face. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then on the sun cups, hands down, if you if you said you didn't fall on sun cups, you're a liar. I'm just going to say that because everyone falls on sun cups, um, and it just sucks, and it takes up so much energy. It's, oh. So many nightmares with sun cups, but again, that's what it would take, unfortunately. Because <laughs> it's about, it's not about the walking, it's about the falling. Yes, exactly. I want to save what I have. <laughs> Please. I like my nose, exactly how it is. Exactly. I don't want any skin grabs. Please. <laughs> yes. Exactly. You had a pretty epic birthday party out there. Oh yeah, I mean they <laughs> I did. they really did it up pretty good for you. They did. I felt pretty spoiled. Um, a lot of people. Well, I don't know if I'd say a lot of people, but some people expressed um, just kind of not displeasure of having a birthday on trail, but they're just kind of like they don't, they don't want to have expectations because what can you actually do if you're on trail to help celebrate? Unless you're in town, of course. Mm -hmm. um, Lucky for me, um, I had already been home by this time. By home, I mean I'm in Washington, um, hiking through White Pass right before my birthday. And so I had my family able to come see me. Um, so that was really nice. My mom got to come, my dad, my aunt. Um, so they all came and brought me goodies. That was also when um, Jade and PCP met back up with me. So I wasn't hiking alone anymore. And the morning of my birthday, we were hiked just outside the Mount Rainier um, Park boundary. Mm -hmm. So we woke up and I was hopeful we would see elk because there was a scouter in the area that um, had told us there was a huge herd in the area. He just couldn't locate him yet, but he could hear him calling and stuff. So I was really excited to just, you know, be up close and personal with Rainier in the morning for a sunrise. I was really hoping to see uh, heard of elk that'd be really really cool um and I was really oh, I was so hoping for trail magic <laughs> when we got to um anytime you cross the road you're hoping for trail magic but there's a huge pull-off um at the Chinook Pass right there at Mount Rainier huge pull-out 
And I was just thinking, man, it would be so awesome for my birthday to have an awesome, like, bread. Like, if there's a barbecue, I just kept, like, you know, mind over matter. I'm just going to envision this is going to happen. It's going to. Unfortunately, it didn't. <laughs> we tried to hang around the parking lot for, I don't know, like a good hour milking it, thinking, like, someone's going to see us and be like, you poor souls. <laughs> Tell me your struggles. Tell me your stories. Here's some food. Trying um, to pick up some trail magic. <laughs> yes. Um, unfortunately nothing happened. Um, but um we went on about our day and we ended up scouting out this cabin that you could um get to and sleep to for the night. And so we ended up making it to this cabin for my birthday. Um we shared it with I think there's probably like a dozen people there when we got there. It's the oh, Mike wow. um Mike Urich, Urich. I don't know how to say it. It's U R I C H. Um the Mike your uh cabin so we got to stay there and then us girls took the loft me jade and tcp and then um ginger balls was also with us he took the, the downstairs um and then right before bed we were having dinner and then they brought out the surprise for me and they had packed out what did they pack out they packed out rice they took rice krispies and they covered it in frosting i want to say was it frosting or nutella or like a chocolate nutella or something something some sort of spread on top of it and nutella makes sense so i'm trying to think if someone brought duncan hines frosting that's not right mm. <laughs> that would be good though um, be good. i think it was probably nutella and then they sprinkled um skittles on top <laughs> and of course there's a candle and then they had a bag of Skittles on it, and they sang me happy birthday, and that was um, that was really nice. And a nice top off to the to the day. Yeah, it it filled you up. It did. Yes, I needed some of my family back in my life after everything that I've gone through um, since going alone, and it was it was everything I, I needed to fill my because that nice. final push to many part. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Now, there there was a moment I guess it was it you was it I think it was a food thing when you when you guys were around the Spahican area. But you were going to choose not to go into Spahican and you were just going to go straight through Rainy Pass and you were going to get a resupply from your boyfriend and then just push through. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a question in your mind, at least initially, as to whether PCP and Jade would do the same with you or whether they would go into Sihikin and, and come back out again. But yeah. It looked like they stayed with you. Yeah. So we all decided to stay together and I gave them the option. You, know, you don't have to if you don't want to. This is your hike as much as mine. But this is what I think I need to do for myself. Um, and um, they no hesitation said no we're with you as well like yes Tahikin is definitely a bucket list stop for people to make um I mean that cinnamon roll that you see in pictures <laughs> looks amazing doesn't it I mean yeah. yeah yeah so that was kind of a really bummer to miss um but my the biggest thing for me was my feet were hurting so bad um yeah. and then we had issues with some of our food supply not having a box um, and my boyfriend was resupplying us for me, but he would have um, the supplies for us necessary. So we decided to, to cross off to Hegan and he would just meet us um, at Rainy Pass. And then mm -hmm. we could just resupply from my big box. And that, that worked for us. And we still got baked goods because we made it into Mazama um, yes. last minute. And it was great. It was awesome. <laughs> the, it, it's so... Uh... I'm probably making this into a bigger thing than it probably was when they basically said, you know, no, we're going to stay with you. We're not going to go to Spahican and, and whatever. But I would feel like that was affirming of the, the Tramley bond, so to speak, that you guys had. And, and as we said kind of earlier, your ride or die, your ride or die chicks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I also think it's because how close we were to the end um, and us being able to finally meet back up together and and hike we wanted to finish together um 
And so if there was a chance of compromising that because I kept going and they didn't, um, we just really didn't want that. And so I think that also played a factor. Oops, you um, just lost your video. There we are. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think us being that close to the border, if it compromised us in any way being able to finish together, I think that, that definitely played a factor into us sticking together. Yeah. It's, it's so interesting to me, the bonds that are made with people on trail. And, mm -hmm. and it, I, I know that it very much is about the struggle that you guys all go, to, go through together that bonds you into such a tight unit. Mm -hmm. um, and and able to I guess commiserate and or buoy <laughs> you know each other up uh -huh. as, as needed so to speak yeah yeah um I definitely think going through the harder parts on trail definitely strengthens that bond for sure um having gone through the Sierra with Jade um really strengthened our bond because it was just us two girls and the guys mm -hmm. um and there's also, it was just us two girls at all in this year, as far as we know. Um, the only other woman we know that was around was, uh, I can't remember her name. She was from New Zealand. The Restless Kiwi. Does that ring The only bell? New Zealanders that I know were out there that went through were Tip Tap and Mari. So before, um, before hmm. they got through, there was an older older woman by the name of I can't remember her name but her website is restless kiwi um i will have to look her up yeah she's an awesome awesome woman she's uh she was part of the new zealand military some some rank of the military um but she's retired and she just does the trails now um mm -hmm. anyways um that was a tangent i <laughs> <laughs> That's all the I, are. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, back to that. It was just um, having someone to lean on in those those hard trying times really strengthens the bond. Um, yeah. So that that's how we became so just um, buoyant on each other. Yes. <laughs> to get through the suffer fest, you know. Yeah. yeah. Miserless company. <laughs> oh, one hundred percent. And I'm sure it's probably even better when it's another woman because they get and or you get what they're going through, they get what you're going through. So forth. Yeah. Yeah. Um you, <laughs> you noted I think this was particularly up in Washington. Um but I'm sure that there was probably along the way you uh you made comments in your videos about rookie moves. Rookie moves. Yeah, the one that I've got in memory. Oh, absolutely. Um, <laughs> you got your phone and the battery. Oh, yes. Yes. Battery swap out. Um, yeah. But Sorry, I'm trying to fix my screen. No okay. worries. Or better. Um, but... I, I want to talk about that, but I want to also kind of touch base with you on other, in retrospect, rookie moves that you, that you may have uh, performed out there. I would say, hmm, and early on, I wouldn't say it's rookie move. I would just say it was probably an inexperienced um, decision on my part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I guess, yeah, rookie move. <laughs> I I decided to start uh, with just the foam thermos pad. That was a huge mistake. Um, like the, the the yellow egg crate-y? Yeah, the the Z Light Soul. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I decided I'm just going to start off with that, and so I shipped my air pad to Kennedy Metal. So rather than fork out, I don't know, seventy bucks or so at a at a store to get a natural air pad to get me by until I got there. I just decided to kind of just swallow um, my decision and just try to sleep on this egg carton for 700 miles because <laughs> I'm just stubborn like that. How um, was that? It was uncomfortable. <laughs> um, 
it's definitely um, not something I've continued to do. Um, mm. I've never only slept on that on its own, never again. Um, and so once I got my AirPad in Kennedy Meadows, I never let it go. <laughs> um, I carried it the entire way. Um, and I eventually ended up cutting my my Z Light into a tip pad. So I repurposed it. I didn't awesome. <laughs> And yeah. you could give and you could give part of it away to somebody else for a sit set. Exactly. Actually, that's what we did. I think it was in um I think it was in Sierra City. I was cutting at my AirPad at the general store. Yeah, it was. And I was I asked if anybody else wanted it and they started cutting away as well. So. <laughs> you had yep. a Z Light cutting party. Yes, we did. <laughs> what other kind of uh, rookie move did you did you Ooh. kind of go, oh, okay, next time I'll know better? I would say underestimating the cold. But again, okay, yeah, this is, yeah, that makes sense. I've never really camped to begin with, so I just thought um, I'd be fine putting it on my layers and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. I really underestimated how cold it would be camping in the Sierra. Um, and so, I thought that a 15 degree bag would hold me over and it did not. Um, so when I got to, where was it? Bishop? Yeah, mm -hmm. the first layoff part was Bishop. I had to go to the, the gear store and get a liner. Um, so that is probably a, a rookie mistake I learned from. I now have a zero degree bag to combat <laughs> that issue. I have leveled up. Um, what, what zero degree bag did you get? Um, so I have, um, what is it? A Thermarest Oberon. Oh, Ooh, okay. I think it's an Oberon. That's what it's called, but it's really pretty. It's yellow and orange. And bright. <laughs> it's, it's a Skittle. It is. It's a Skittle. <laughs> is that the one you used on the Oregon coast trail? No, the one on the Oregon coast trail, uh, <laughs> was a 20 degree bag. And even that was too cold. Um, I should have known better for that one too. Um, I just thought, I don't know, I guess thinking you're on the coast, it's going to be warm, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, even a 20 degree bag was was cold on there. A bag I used was a Thermarest uh, Vesper 20 degree bag. And that's actually a quilt, not a bag. Okay. And any other rookie moves besides the, the phone battery? I don't think so. Not that comes to mind. Okay. No, I don't think so. Is there anything I'm missing? <laughs> Is there like a no, really no? I, it's <laughs> funny because the the where I really heard you use the term rookie move was when you were talking about. So you were talking about the the heavy external battery and your phone and how it was. You know, you weren't running through the battery, and so you were like, "Oh, I can." I can downsize. Oh, I yeah, can yeah. save some weight. Okay. One no of the struggles of having a dog is making sure he's able to get outside when he's in the cold, <laughs> calling at the door. I felt really bad. Yeah, that could go very bad very quickly. Yes, it could. <laughs> um, um, so, yeah. basically, the weight, the, the phone reducing your battery weight and then coming to regret it. Yeah. Um, I wasn't um, very experienced, again, with knowing what kind of battery, um, I guess, I would need to go, um, well, I guess I knew how much battery I needed, but I wasn't sure how well the solar charger would perform. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of knew how much my phone would need, how much, I wasn't really charging my Garmin towards the end, because I only used it really to um, if I didn't have service, be able to uh, send a message to my boyfriend to say what my coordinates were so he knew the general area. And then my headlamp was rechargeable. So I knew I didn't really need a whole lot of battery, but I just wasn't sure. I wasn't aware that solar wasn't going to work out. <laughs> now, why didn't it um, work out? I think it's because um, it was only... I want to say the one that I got was a 7,000. Yeah, it was a 7,000 whatever uh, rate of measurements they used. Mm -hmm. um, and the, what I was using was a 26,000. 
Right. So it was definitely a fraction of what I was used to. Um, and I do use my phone a lot um, when I'm out there. I try not to, but again, I'm, I was videoing a lot, taking pictures a lot. Um, and once we got up there past, um, I would say, uh, just past, just past Mount Rainier is when it really started to get cold at night. Um, and so I felt like the coldness was, was kind of zapping it. Um, I didn't have a case for it either. My, my real battery pack, um, has a case in it, so it's insulated. So it mm -hmm. definitely holds, um, the charge a little bit better. Um, also the sunlight <laughs> is a little, not very direct in Washington and that stretch. So I, just, I think a lot of those factors played into it not performing as well as it should. That and it wasn't really um, a high rated, uh, highly reviewed, I guess. Right. It, was just, it was just the Amazon cheap thing that my boyfriend got and said, hey, just try this out and see if that works better. And it didn't. So you learn. <laughs> right. But you were hiking at that point with both Jade and PCP. So if you ran out of battery or phone battery or something like that, you were hiking around with them. So yeah, you had yeah, somebody to follow worst. with. Yeah. Yes. Worst comes to worst. We had that to lean on for one another, which was great. Um, I didn't have my phone or my headlight really run out at all, but it definitely, um, I was just a very um, conservative with how much I used it once I started realizing, okay, this isn't, this gear isn't working out. So I should probably be real careful. Um, so yeah, that, that definitely sucks. I, I learned my lesson. <laughs> yeah, but very grateful that they were with me because then I could also bump into them if I needed to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you do much night hiking? I, I'm sorry, one more time. Did you do much night hiking? Um, I didn't when I was with them. Um, I did when I was in Oregon um, to get the miles done. Um, but no, not not in Washington at all. But I like it. I like night hiking a lot. <laughs> Why? Um, it's just peaceful um, in a different way than so in the daylight. Because you, you're kind of just focused on, I would say, your breathing and your body's movements rather than watching. Well, for me, at least. I know some people watch the woods at night like a monster's going to come out, <laughs> which I guess it could. But um I just found it to be kind of meditative. Like you're, you're just out there walking and listening to your breath and okay, looking up at the stars if you want to. Um, yeah, I just liked it for, for, for that. You didn't worry about animals, that kind of thing? Not really. And yeah. I don't want to say I was naive about it, um, but I just felt like the odds of it happening i know i mean i know i've heard of stories like with star wars how she was mm -hmm. um tracked by one and um in washington there's been a couple instances of mountain bikers or uh trail runners that have gotten attacked but i just kind of was thinking the, the odds aren't that high so i think if i just keep to myself and i keep aware um like i don't hike with headphones in and that sort of thing um so i think if i just keep my wits about me and I hear certain things or see certain things, you know, um, I think I could kind of, kind of avoid that situation. I hope at least. Did you just kind of universally not hike with headphones in or specifically like when you were by yourself or specifically at night or whatever? Um, just whenever, um, okay. I did bring headphones for just in case at nighttime, um, some people snore and so <laughs> I would rather just play music and know for sure I'm not going to hear you than just to hope that the earbuds are going to work mm -hmm. um so I brought the earbuds for that um and then also um for some of the vlogging if there was like high winds and stuff it's easier to just put the headphone in and hold the mic and talk if you want to do a quick flip um that sort of thing but when I'm hiking I normally don't play music and I normally don't use headphones because I'm not playing music. I'm just listening to the sounds around me. Again, I would like to be aware if there's a bear or a cougar or yeah anything happening. <laughs> so, yeah. Did you run into any black bears or bears? 
Oh, um, let's see. The first bear I saw, um, I was with Jade. We were uh, just south of Sierra City, and Jade's the one who saw it first. Um, we came to the spot where we were having to go down to the river and hop across it um, and then go up to meet the trail on the other side. And we come through this brush and she says, oh my God, oh my God, stop. And at that point, I had never seen a bear before. Um, I had never seen a cougar before. I, when hers, when she says, oh my God, stop, I wasn't really alarmed by, oh my God, it's a bear or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I was like, what? <laughs> Looked around and she's like, look, there's a bear. And there, probably, I don't know, 300 yards away on the other side of the hill where we were supposed to catch the trail was a bear probably, I kid you not, the size of a Volkswagen. Like, as far away as we were, it was huge. And I'm okay. not saying that because I've never seen a bear before. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> I was like, that thing is ginormous. Like, it has the right of way all day long. I am I will wait here until you move along the trail. <laughs> right. So, unfortunately, um, we had the river between us, so it couldn't hear us. Jade was trying to play music and get it to kind of, like, hear us and get afraid and run off, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm spook it but unfortunately it couldn't hear us I think because of the river um so we kind of just sat there and waited for a second talking amongst ourselves like well, what do we do like we have to go that way um and it's right there so that's not really an option probably two minutes go by and there was um I think probably just a wind that caught our smell <laughs> amazing smell <laughs> caught our smell and sent it his way because he literally I had my phone up and we were like recording him and I was zoomed in on him he literally swivels his head around and looks right into the phone and then like turns back and just books it over the hill just runs full speed and it was yeah he's gone in like no time I was like could you imagine him running after us like he was he was so fast and he was so big. I was like, how do you even, how do you even move that fast? Like, I don't, it was mind boggling. That he could move like, that fast? Yes. Cause I, I mean, you'd seen it in videos, I guess, like on Nat Geo and things mm -hmm. like that. But like to see it in person, you're just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> that thing is fast and big. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and you guys unfortunately smelled, he was far away. And you guys smelled rank. Yes. Apparently. Yes, we were we were right, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I saw that was the first bear, and then we saw I think it was like two mornings later, Jade and I packed up camp and we're walking and it's relatively flat and it's just going kind of like around corners and stuff. So you don't really see what's coming up. Mm -hmm. And I'm always in front. Now I think about it, it's kind of mean. She probably does on purpose. <laughs> You're gonna have to have a word with Jade. Yeah, I know. She put me in front, and uh, we're, I go around this corner, and she is maybe she's literally like right behind me. I come around this corner, and I just like flip around, and I turn towards her, and I'm like, "Oh my god!" And she's like, "What?" <laughs> she like looks to the side of me, and she sees just this like cinnamon bear butt running away from me. <laughs> And it was just, she was cracking up because she's like, you guys were so cute. It was like, you guys saw each other. I'm like, ah, and she just like ran away. I was like, yeah, I didn't think it was very cute because it was literally, <laughs> it seemed, if I, I don't think my imagination is making this up, but I want to say it was probably 20 feet from me. It was pretty close. Like it was, but it wasn't very big either. We think it was probably like a juvenile, maybe like three years old. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like a mama bear or anything like that. Um, that was the closest encounter I probably had, but I did have one more encounter, actually two more, I guess. The other one that was close was uh, in just outside of Shasta, right before we got to Shasta, so I was still with Jade. We were warned about this mama bear that has two cubs and it's really notorious. It's an all the gut hook comment. Um, and we just talked to our friend, Davy Jones, about it, he had just passed through like the week prior. And he says, yes, the comments are real, like be aware, don't have your headphones in, like play music, talk to each other, don't split up, like, like be on the lookout. Of course we weren't. 
um, we weren't together. <laughs> um, I wasn't wearing headphones though, and I wasn't playing music. I was just walking along, but I was ahead of Jade by, I don't know, meh, 10 minutes maybe, pop. Um, and I was walking around the same kind of thing where it's like just corners, blind corners, and I'm walking and um, I get to like this kind of like U in the trail. And so I have to like walk around this kind of like uh, slope and I'm walking. And then right when I get to like the, the tip of the U, I hear this rustling on my left. And I kind of like just look over and there's a baby black bear, literally could fit in my backpack. Climbing so up small. a tree. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah. And I I just like stared at it. I was like, oh hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and I just kind of like looked around really quick to make sure like I wasn't in any immediate danger with mama to see if like she was like maybe she was above me or something. Um so I just really quickly cased around, didn't see anything, scurried to the other side of the the rest of the trail. And it had when I had seen it, it was at the bottom of a tree. And so I'd watched it climb to the top of the, well, like midway to the tree. Um, and so I get to the other part of the other side of the U and I sit there and I'm like, just staring at it thinking like, please don't scream. Please don't make a sound. Please don't call for mom. Don't just sit there and let me and my friend go on our way. <laughs> so I just sat there waiting and waiting, thinking like, come on, Jay, what are you doing back there? Please hurry up. Um, and eventually she comes around the corner and first I hear her music, which is great. So I'm thinking, okay, if mama was around her, she's not around her anymore because the music kind of scared her off. Mm -hmm. But I'm also thinking, okay, well, mama's probably upset as well because she's probably worried about the baby because she's separated from the baby. So I hear the music, I'm thinking, okay, this is a good sign. Jade's still alive, she's coming towards me. <laughs> <laughs> and she uh, comes around the corner and I felt so bad because my I didn't know how else to react, but my reaction like made her cry, I guess. So I was like, oh my God, gee, there's a bear. Hurry up, hurry, hurry, hurry. And she just like starts freaking out and I felt so bad. She's like, I don't know what to do. And before that, Jade was the more collected person. <laughs> when it came I was to that, say. I was running away from bears and stuff and she was cool about it and laughing. Apparently not laughing now. <laughs> so she was a little emotional. And I think, I'm not, I don't know why, maybe it's because she was coming up on seeing her family in Shasta, so she might have just been like, I need to make it out alive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but she ended up finally, like, braving it and just running around the tree for the, the bend that was separating us. Um, she's like, please don't leave me. Please don't leave me. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm like, I'm not going to leave you. If I was going to leave you, I would have left her. <laughs> <laughs> so she eventually made it to me in one piece, and we made it out together. Um, but that you night, never saw um, there. No, we never saw Mama Bear, um, and I, we're pretty sure that that was the same bear talked about in the gut hook guide, so we were also worried about the other baby, so we're like, mm -hmm. well, I wonder if they're all separated, <laughs> and we're yeah. all going to meet them separately, um, but we never saw Mama, we never saw the bears again, thank God, <laughs> don't want that at all. Yeah, but you, but you started to say, and then that night. Oh yeah, so that night we ended up getting to, so we had about, I think it was like three miles to go until we got to camp. And it was, um, it was like a day use camp. So it wasn't just like one of those um, tent areas you would see on gut hooks that said, oh, space for like three tents or something. Mm -hmm. It was an actual um, camping area, day use people could come. So we were really excited to finally just like book it there and see other people and know that there'd be other sounds around us and we shouldn't have an issue with bears um so that was great when we got there and we saw that it was true there, there was other people unfortunately um i don't want this to carry the wrong connotation but some people don't have the bear awareness with them when they go out to the outdoors so they don't realize you can't leave food out yeah. you need to leash your dogs um there's certain things you need to do to protect not only yourself, but others and, and protect the bears, of course, um, it's their habitat. We are visitors. So yep. we had some day use people there who um, didn't, well, they leashed their dogs, but what they had done was they leashed their dogs and then put the leash underneath the leg of like one of those fold up 
llama. I saw <laughs> that picture. I couldn't believe it. And I was like, okay, that's just asking for it. Cause that dog is going to see a chipmunk. I'm thinking something like small, like is going to happen. Yeah. So what ended up happening was right around, oh, I don't know. It was like 10 o'clock at night. It was light out. Like we were all sleeping or trying to. And we heard all of a sudden the dogs just erupt and barking. And then we hear like, not rattling, but just like something being drugged. Mm-hmm. And then we realized the dog is dragging the chair through the camping area. And one of the guys that was closest to us, so the dog nicked one of my guy lines on my tent. Luckily it didn't break. It just pulled a stake out. Oh, lucky. I can just imagine. I, I kept thinking like, he's going to crash through my tent. Like I'm going to have a hole in my seat back. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, something else happened to one of our neighbors. He was in a, I think he was in a Six Moons design tent uh something like that but it was really low profile so it was almost like a bivy in a way and it had like one uh it held up by one trekking pole Mm -hmm. the dog broke it so the guy had to sleep cowboy camping which isn't that bad i love cowboy camping um but i guess when you weren't wanting to cowboy camp (laughs) it kind of sucks that you're not forced to cowboy camp well and you also (laughs) exactly that's probably the worst part of it yeah so, and then we think it was because there was a bear, um, just because how the dog reacted so much was, mm-hmm. it just seemed like, mm, we were pretty close to where that bear was. So I wouldn't surprise me if it was the bears coming in because they, they had left a bunch of food out. When we left in the morning, we went over, I mean, we weren't invading their space, but we just walked by to see if, like, what could what it look like for? yeah there was like a pizza box there was like pbr cans out <laughs> could you not we were like oh okay so they were here for the picnic got it <laughs> everybody's here for the picnic yeah it's chair magic for the bears <laughs> <laughs> i know i'm sure the bears are like oh trail magic yeah, we hit the jackpot <laughs> yeah exactly exactly yeah. Other than being out there for the the time that we were already talking about with your mom and your grandmother and that kind of thing, what was another really tough or difficult time for you out there? Um... Oh. Honestly, I don't, the only times that I really had trouble was when I was worried about our safety. Um, when I talked about going back into Kearsarge Pass. Um, and then with my grandma. Other than that, it was pretty smooth sailing. Like, I didn't have that many, that much doubt or that much. Uh, you didn't have much injury or blisters or that kind of stuff either? No. I mean, I had blisters sometimes. Um I had pretty gnarly blisters in the beginning uh, when I went through Julian. I had a really hot day, and I wasn't wearing my Ingenti liners, and I was too stubborn, of course, to pull off, change my socks, and put them on. So they sweat, and I had the gnarliest blisters on my toes. Um, learned my lesson. Other than that, I did have some issues with my feet um, when I decided to push my limits in a pair of ultras. Um, I think I logged about almost I think it was almost 1200 miles and I've heard of ultras that's don't recommend a little it. long yeah don't recommend it I I bought them all the way back in Kennedy Meadows and I didn't replace them until the bridge of the dog so was yeah. that just you <laughs> trying to be frugal and and push I don't know because I even I even had the replacement shoes so it wasn't like I didn't have the shoes to like replace them with I just I don't know I I didn't wear them the whole time so I got them in Kennedy Meadows I switched them out in Bishop to um offset it with boots Mm -hmm. then I got them back in Sierra City and then wore them all the way from Sierra City Northern California to the Bridge of the Gods so overall that's how I got the 1200 miles um but I'd bought 
new ultras when uh, my family came to see me in Ashland. Or not ultras, I got hocus. Yeah, I got hocus. The goats, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I wasn't ready. I still had tread on them, and I, I, <laughs> I was like, I know I'll just tread. do them. Yeah, it's like I still have tread on these. Like I can still make it work, and if I can't, then I'll just. Josh said he would come down and bring the shoes to me, and it'd be no big deal. Well, I just didn't want to be uh, stubborn. I didn't want. Yeah, I was stubborn. I didn't want him to like. I didn't want him to have to take off time from the weekend to drive down to give me a pair of shoes. So I just didn't want to be a problem. I was just like, I'll just swallow it. Like it's with a little pain, like no pain, no gain. Yeah, it's not a good idea. But Don't that recommend was, it. I think that that was what set, even once you switched your shoes out, that was what set you up for your feet issues going through Washington, right? And part of the reason why yeah. you weekend. Yeah, because not only were my feet toast at that point because of what I'd done in the ultras, and then just throwing them into a, a different shoe brand altogether, a different design. Um, I've never worn Hocus before, um, and I I would wear them again, but I, I think I should have maybe taken either shorter days to kind of offset how much I was on my feet and stuff, or just maybe taken a little break off trail, um, or just taken a zero here and there as I came to town stuff, just to give my feet some reprieve, and I just didn't. I was too stubborn on, like, getting to the finish line and being done with it, but yeah. As the saying goes, the the last one to Canada is the winner. So don't rush it. <laughs> don't rush it. Going back to real life is a trap. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. But you were also pushing to try to get to PCT days, right? Yeah. Um. I at first it wasn't really on my radar. I could I could live without it. It wasn't that big of a deal to go. But the more the girls talked about it the more I was like, no, this is definitely something I want to go because I would rather go the year that I'm hiking than go the year afterwards because mm -hmm. I feel like I would be able to connect with more people from my class that way. Um, and plus it would give me a chance to see more people that I haven't seen in a while. Yeah. So um, there are some people that were a little bit behind us that just started taking more of their own time on trail. So it'd be nice to see them one more time before you know, you go back to, to real life uh, and then you only see them on social media sort of thing. So once I kind of got on that train, I was like, no, I, I really do want to finish by then and then be able to go to PCG days and then and then heal <laughs> the rest. How long did it take to heal your feet? Ooh, that was really rough. Um, I had to wear shoes around the house. I couldn't walk barefoot. It was too... Like my feet were just way too tender to just, we lived in hardwood floors. So it was just way too tender on the feet to walk without shoes on. So I had to buy a pair of shoes for the house because I don't like to wear shoes in the house anyways, but I also don't want to wear dirty shoes in the house. So I had to buy a pair of shoes for that. Um, and I don't think I could take them off in the house for probably two to three weeks. I was wearing shoes in the house, um, literally from the time I got up. Like I even had to slip them on at night to, to go to the bathroom. Um, wow. They were just really, wow. really tender. Um, but they're fine now. They're good. <laughs> um, I didn't have to really change anything about my my like shoe setup. Um, before the trail, I was wearing Solomon's. I'm still wearing Solomon's now. And I haven't had to wear, uh, some people have to wear like inserts mm -hmm. afterwards or even during. And then I never had to do that. So. They, they're in good shape. They're still attached. <laughs> Look down at them and say, thank you, feet. Yes, thank you. Thank you for all that you do. <laughs> Is there anything that we haven't talked about that we should? Hmm. Mm. I think so. No. Okay. Where should, where can people find you if they have questions or they want to see the videos that you edited together about your different hikes and the hikes to come? So you can find me on Instagram and I'm at ms underscore Rebecca underscore Ann, Miss Rebecca Ann. 
on Instagram. And then you can also find me on YouTube if you search Little Skittle. Um, that's where I also just uploaded all my PCB videos today. So Up those are all on my channel now. So the, all so the videos I did for the track, I just transfer them over to my channel today. Got it. Okay. So now right. everything is all cohesive and comprehensive. So you can find all the adventures there from starting with the PCP, um, Timberline Trail is up there, Oregon Coast Trail, and then soon I hope the CDP. <laughs> nice. Okay. So I love I love to finish these conversations off with good vibrations, so to speak. Mm. Okay. Um, and so I'm going to quote you back to you. Okay. Uh, basically on day five, mile 68.4, you wrote on Instagram, oh honey, if you only knew how much the next 1800 miles of the trail would wreck and reward you. But we all need crazy stories to tell our grandchildren one day, right? Yeah, I think, do you have that picture? Is that a sunset or a sunrise picture? I'm it in a yellow is. beanie. It's I know that one. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> so what is the crazy story that you would tell your grandchild about your PCP adventure? I would say even hmm, say how do I phrase this right? Um, I would say whether whether you think you can or you can't you're right. Because I think it's all about the mindset you go into it. If you think you can't do something, if you already have the doubt in your mind that you're not capable or you're not worthy or you know, for some reason you think you're just inexperienced to even get through something, that's already going to kind of put you off on the bad foot. So I think if you go in it with a healthy mindset of, I can do that, I am worth it, I, I can gain the experience and gain the knowledge and I can overcome um, setbacks and struggles and I'll be better off for it like I, I can I can come through the other side and have a different perspective and a different different outlook on life and hopefully be changed for the better by it so the experience I think on the trail that best defines that um, would be facing the fear-mongering for the Sierra um, I didn't listen to people saying, well, you can't go in that early. Like, that's unheard of. Like, why would you go in? Um, I think it was May 15th when we went in, and it's not really recommended until, I think, towards the end of June. Um, but we just thought, you know what, we we can do it if we if we follow the right steps and we, we take the right precautions and we're smart about it. Um, you absolutely can do it, and, and we did. So whether you think you can or you can't. You're right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you, I guess, kind of triggering into or tying into what you were just saying about being worthy? Mm -hmm. Did that ever come up in your mind as you were doing the trail or before you started the trail? Uh I don't think so. Not that I can recall. No. No, not on not on the trail. Nice. Which is good. The the and as we I guess we established at the very beginning, the trail supported you. The trail brought you gratitude. Yes. Yes, it did. Um I guess there is one other thing that we haven't talked about that maybe we should please um so it wasn't until after the pct that i approached um shedding light on this um part of my life but i um let's see it's been about five years now i came out um with um acknowledging my eating disorder with my family um 
and I was never public about it. I know it was always something that um, I kept to myself and my close loved ones and stuff. Um, but I got the courage to share it after the trail just because, um, just to show that you don't have to be held back by something to, um, how do I say this? you don't have to let something hold you back from going after something you want to do. Um, it doesn't define you. It's a part of you. Um, but something like that can strengthen, um, strengthen your, your steps forward and for healing. Um, and so I decided to share it on social media um, a few months after finishing because I felt like the culture that surrounds through hiking um, can be a little, well, not a little, it can be quite damaging um, for someone with um, disordered eating or um, restricted eating habits, that sort of thing, just a body dysmorphia sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Cause a lot of it is so food centric about eating a lot of calories and yeah. eating whatever you want, hiker hunger and all that stuff. Um, but I just wanted to show people that even if you have something like that, you can absolutely, um, I don't think you ever really uh, heal from it completely. It doesn't ever go away. I think it's something you always kind of struggle with. It just becomes part of you. But it doesn't have to stop you or prevent you from going after and doing things just because it might trigger you. Um, I think if you have the right support system, the right mindset, um, the right, um, the right habits that you can go into it that will help protect your your um, your recovery so far. I think it can absolutely be a success and and transform uh, you and once you get off trail. How so. did you going into the trail knowing food was going to be an issue and calories going to be an issue and all of that? How did you keep yourself? in that healthy mindset around that. Because a lot of people who don't come into it with any sort of eating disorder end up with an eating disorder out of it or, yes. or eating issues out of it, you know, and particularly uh -huh. when they get off trail again. Yeah. Um, and there was a lot of, I wouldn't, there was a lot of talk about when you get off trail, how you just gain it all right back. Like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think just going into it, um, Going into it, I think I just kept reminding myself that the my body is a vessel that's going to take me to the end. And if I don't feel it the, the right way, much like if you don't feel your mind the right way with positive thoughts, that's going to come out. It's going to show. Um, and it's, it's going to affect your hike. It's going to affect, you know, after the hike. Um, so I think going into it, I just kept thinking, leading up to it, okay, when you get out there, like, you can't, you have to be able to realize that what you're putting into your body is to feel you to get to the end. It's to feel you, well, not just the end, but every space in between. So whether you finish mm -hmm. here or in Canada, um, it's important that I do feel myself. I can't be restrictive. I can't be binging can be purging. I can't do all these different things. Um, if I want to succeed, if I want to reach my goal, if I want to have this transformative adventure. Uh, so I knew that this is what I wanted, what I needed. And I didn't, I wasn't going to let that have the power over me to say what I was going to have. So. You had to keep your eye on the prize. Exactly. Yeah. And realize that Yes, there's gonna be triggering things as far as like buying your resupply and like how much how much candy I put in it. <laughs> yeah. Um, when you get to an all you can all you can eat buffet, you know, there's there's lots of different things along the way that can definitely be a triggering factor and definitely was a triggering factor. Um, but again, it's something that you never, I think, fully recover from. You're always gonna be going through it. But as long as you're mindful of it, as long as you're conscious of it, and you can recognize those things and know that 
know how to navigate healthy around that, I think you're going to be fine. Like you're going to make it out and you're going to have a great, great experience. You'll be stronger. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Hmm. What was your favorite moment on trail or one of your favorite moments? Uh, so many. Yeah, there's a lot. Um, it's funny because whenever like I look back on it or like if I do like a throwback Thursday or whatever on, on social media, I always all type out my favorite. And I'm like, no, it's one of my favorites. <laughs> so hard to pick. I almost feel like I'm a mother and I'm like picking between my children. Yeah. Um, but I think my... It's got to be. <laughs> it's got to be when I saw. <laughs> yeah. It's got to be when I saw my mom though um, at the Bridge of the Gods. That was like, yeah, that was everything. I um, yeah, it was really hard to go through the Oregon Challenge um, physically, but also mentally, because I. I hadn't talked to her the entire time, like I said, um, so I didn't really know how she was doing. And it's not like I thought my family was lying to me or, you know, hiding the fact that she's not okay or, you know, whatnot. Um, but just to finally see her and hear her voice and hug her. Yeah. <laughs> and it was everything. So it wasn't even like, it wasn't even like a part of the trail that was my favorite. It was just just being able to connect with my mom and know that me being out there, I'm going to be okay. And she's going to be okay. And I'm where I need to be. And, and she's where she needs to be. And it's going to, it's going to be okay. It's going to be great. So that was, that was my favorite part. You guys both came through the fire stronger. Yes. Yes, we did. A huge thank you to Becca for sharing her stories from the trails and Maya Wynn for the use of the song Try Again. You can find links for the video podcast on our website at hiking-through.com or go directly to our brand new Hiking Through channel on YouTube. On next week's episode, I'll be talking with Mike Kickstand Papadatos about his calendar year triple crown. I hope that this conversation, these conversations, inspire you to get out there and have a few hiker trash moments of your own. I'll see you on the trail.